Okay, I think we're ready to go. So, all right, so um, hi, I'm Dominic. I'm Vanil, and today we'll be talking about our project, Understanding Internet Anycast. Okay, so before we dive into our project, a little bit of background. Um, BGP, or Border Gateway Protocol, allows groups of routers called autonomous systems to exchange information about IP addresses they carry. These messages are called routing advertisements. So on the left, you can see an example of how AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile can communicate to each other what IP addresses they carry. Routing advertisements are controlled through peering and transit agreements, which allow for free and tolled traffic exchange, respectively. The end result of all these agreements and exchanges is a fully connected internet. Uh, next slide. A router like the one in your home collects all of the routing advertisements it receives and creates a routing table from them, except only the best route for any given range of IP addresses makes the cut. How is this determined? Routers have a built-in selection algorithm that uses metrics like the length of the path to find the best one. This is similar to how Google Maps, for example, found the best route from UNC to Duke on the left, despite there being many different ways to get there. The presence of multiple paths is important for the main focus of our project, Anycast Networks. You can go on. Okay, so what is Anycast? So Anycast is a routing system that lets multiple servers use the same IP address. And this is used by everyone from Google to Microsoft, to the uh, root DNS servers that we're gonna be talking about today. And essentially what happens is that you have servers with the same information at vastly different geographical locations. So that when I want to access, for example, google.com, the traffic gets routed from the server closest to me rather than the one all the way in California, for example. Right now, ours is probably the one in Miami. And so, these are all organized under one autonomous system and the BGP router sends traffic to whichever one is, uh, uh, whichever one is best based on a, its a set of algorithms and protocols to ensure what to define what best is. And two primary tools allow us to explore BGP routing that we used extensively in this project. First is route views. Route views is what's known as a passive collector. And what it essentially does is that it peers with a bunch of ISPs and autonomous systems to collect routing data that crosses the internet every day. However, right Atlas is slightly different. It's what's known as an active system. And essentially it allows us to use software and hardware probes located around the world and make network measurements by sending them commands that they then perform and send the results back to us. And here you can see an example of how exactly BGP routing and any cast work. So if we start off at AS1, which we can assume is your home computer at 192.168.1.7, which is the private IP address. Then that goes to your home router, which then turns it into a public IP address and sends it to your clo closest BGP router for your ISP. Then that ISP sends it to an intermediate ISP with which it has a peering agreement or a transit agreement, which then crosses itself, goes to the opposite end of itself and sends traffic to your destination uh, BTP router, which then has a choice of which specific Anycast server it can send the data to. And in this example, we can see this one is closest to the uh, BGP router. So this is probably where it'll send the traffic to, but it could choose any one of them depending on load and other factors. Now, the important thing to note here is that there's not necessarily just three hops in this scenario. There could be any number of hops, especially depending on whether uh, portions of the internet infrastructure go down, in which case it would take longer to get around those downed areas. And in this way, the internet is very resistant to tampering or hacking or even just uh, accidents. And so today our project goal will be to determine what factors influence Anycast network performance and to what degree. And that we measure by the ping time, which is essentially how long it takes for a signal to go back and forth between my computer or a random computer and an Anycast server. So before we dive into our results, it's important to understand how we obtain them. Throughout this project, we utilized a variety of tools in order to measure the performance of the 12 root DNS Anycast networks. 
The simplest tool, a ping request, simply measures the latency of a connection or how long it takes for a server to respond. A trace route request does well what, the, what its name says. It traces the route, the route network traffic takes along the internet to get to its destination, recording every hop it makes across networks. Lastly, the DNS chaos query allows us to get information about what exact individual server is responding in an Anycast network, which can help us understand the, ge the, the geographical distribution of the network. On their own though, these tools don't give us much insight into how users across the internet experience with Anycast networks may differ. This is where RIPE Atlas comes in. Atlas allows us to dispatch ping, traceroute, and DNS chaos requests from thousands of probes that are located all across the world, giving us a better range of data to work with. We also combine this data with public information from CADA and rootservers.org, which gives us details about the deployment characteristics of each of the Anycast networks. Uh, you can go on. And so here are our results. So first is latency. So basically this is measured through the ping times and we just wanted to give you a sense for how the ping times differ among uh, servers. So here we have the root DNS servers and we're measuring how long it takes for a ping to respond from each of these root DNS servers across thousands of probes across the world. And so this is a cumulative distribution function of those results. And so there's no, one important thing to note is that there's notable differences between these servers. So, uh, sorry, between these providers, right? So each of these uh, groups of servers is managed by a different provider and they each implement different algorithms to, uh, to ensure that uh, data makes its way as fast as possible. And these algorithms have vastly different impacts as you can see in these CDF graphs. And that's what makes these root DNS servers good to work with is that we can ensure that our um, results have broad applicability rather than applicability to just the servers of a particular provider. On this graph, we compare that ping data from the last graph to the number of sites that each Anycast network deploys, which is public information. As you can see from the trend line, the more sites you deploy, the better performance you can generally expect. Remember that lower latency, so a lower value on the y-axis, refers to better performance. Here we can also see a couple of outliers, networks B and M, that perform quite poorly compared to other networks that have similar number of sites. Uh, go on. And on this next graph, we incorporate trace route requests in order to map the networks that various users will traverse when connecting to these Anycast networks. Um, here, we're using this data to determine how many unique networks each Anycast network is connecting to in order to provide their service. So some only use 20 networks, while some use 200. Looking at the graph, we can see that we can see that the more networks you connect to, the better performance you can generally expect, although the presence of outliers is a bit more pronounced here. Okay, so um, here we're looking at the uh, AS path length versus the latency. And so what that essentially means is when we talked about uh, sending trace route requests, there's a certain number of hops that the trace route request takes to arrive at a destination server. And so we took that number of hops and um, grafted against the latency or the ping time. And so what that reveals is again, a pretty good correlation, specifically the R squared is 0.39 in this scenario. And as, oh, that's as to be expected. When we have more hops, that means that there's more spaces for the BGP routing to occur. And this of course takes the most amount of time. Um, communication within a network is, pro is generally going to be uh, faster than communication between networks. But, um, and so that's one of the stopping points or um, bottlenecks that we face when we're discussing how to improve any cast performance. And finally, here's a very important uh, factor that uh, we need to mention as well, which is geographical distribution of Anycast sites. We already discussed that these Anycast sites can be placed uh, anywhere between 20 to 200 uh, different sites per uh, group of servers managed by an independent provider. And as you can see, that creates a lot of outliers because some, uh, some sites some providers might have fewer sites than other providers, which means that any individual request has a much longer 
time to travel or distance to travel than any other request if it, it, in the aggregate on average. And so we can see the two forms of the data, one with outliers and one without outliers. And there's a massive difference because of these two specific outliers that um, really bias the sample in on the left graph. Without the outliers, we see a very clear correlation, which is again to be expected from the sites data that we were talking about earlier. And so the key takeaways here are there are remarkable differences between servers, which again are extremely important to understand because they allow us to make these comparisons in the aggregate rather than applying them to just the specific thing we're talking about. For example, if we ran our tests on Google servers, they might only be applicable to the way that Google manages its routing algorithm. But because there's 12 different servers, each with their own custom routing algorithms, our results have some broader applicability. Second is that distance is probably the most important factor in ping time, which is pretty uh, intuitive. The longer that the signal has to travel across these cables underground, the longer time it takes to make that uh, travel. And so the physical barriers seem to be the most important here. And those are some things we can't really do much about. We can't really reduce the distance uh, between a server and its destination, but we can deploy more servers. So which is why the number of sites is so important because it actually gives us a concrete thing we can change about an Anycast configuration that will then result in better results. Finally, the neighbor data uh, might be a little bit biased because there's there are many um, autonomous systems, uh, many um, IP addresses that didn't map clearly to an autonomous system. So we don't actually know for sure um, uh, whether, how many AS hops we actually had there. Looking ahead, there's a couple of things we'd like to continue studying with this project. Um, first, we'd like to get to the bottom of the outliers we saw in our data, namely networks E and F, which performed much better than others, and networks B and M, which performed much worse. Also, we'd like to determine if there's a correlation between the type of networks you choose to carry your traffic and the performance you can expect. Here, we'd like to see if there's an advantage to peer or transit providers. We'd also like to look at the exact providers that each network uses and find if there's specific good or bad providers. And that's all we have. Um, thank you for taking the time to listen to our talk. Thank you.